Today is Wednesday, January 18th. The days are clicking by quicker than you can imagine. And I am a Stampin' Up! Independent Demonstrator on the East Coast in Chesapeake, Virginia. So I come to you live every Wednesday at noontime, Eastern time, of course. And hopefully you've had a busy, productive morning where you can get lots of stuff done. Now it's time to grab that sandwich, take a break, and you can watch me create. So um, again, my name is Colleen Magnus, and you can check out all my creations on um, this YouTube channel. I also have a creatingwithcolleen.com blog that you can see and a business Facebook page. Guess what? Creating with Colleen. So anything you want to find me on, that's what you'll do. So today I want to share a wonderful bundle from, for, uh, from Stampin' Up! that I absolutely loved. It's called Lighting the Way and it's a adorable uh, lantern, like a camping lantern with fireflies. And when I first was going to purchase it, I thought, well, I don't know, you can't do a whole lot with a lantern. A lantern's a lantern. Um, but I loved it. It was my favorite bundle in the catalog. And so I purchased it and I'm so glad I did. And I can even show you how to change it a little bit. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So I'm just going to turn my camera down, boot up my computer, make sure that we are live on YouTube. But again, thank you for joining me. And um, I hope you'll be back next week too. So let's get started creating. Hold on while I turn you around. Let me flip this around. There we go. One day I'll find a better way, but until then, this is how I, oops, sorry, this is how I roll. Okay. So let me go ahead and boot up my computer here. Hopefully I'll be able to see um, some comments. Let me see. I think I need to click this one. Mm -mm, let me see. Y'all know I'm still fairly new at this. So I think we should be up. But I cannot get it. Oh, I know. Okay. I had to save my changes. Wow. So now I'm wondering if you even saw the beginning of it. Still not working. Hmm. Okay. What am I doing here? Technology has not been my strong point, sadly, um, but you know what? Click the right button and you're there. So I'm sorry for the delay, but now I am here live. Ah! Hopefully y'all saw the beginning of all that too. So hello, Judith and Brenda, Sandy and Linda, Miss Gwen. Y'all know life is a learning curve with me, but I also believe there's no perfection on this side of heaven, so you just got to roll with it. Hello, Tilly. Glad you're here. So as I was telling you, this little Lighting the Way bundle, I just fell in love with it. And I personally like unique dyes. So even if it's a dye, you know, a certain shape that you can't do 10 different things with, if you can make a beautiful lantern with it, I am all about it. And that's what we're going to do. Today I'm going to show you this is the actual lantern in the dye, but this is the lantern I'm going to show you how to make because I wanted a smaller one. So it just wouldn't overpower my card. But let me show you where you can get this. Stampin' Up! has an awesome catalog now through the end of April. It looks like this. It's our mini catalog. And if you go to page 18, that's where you will see the Lighting the Way bundle. Now, when you're looking at this, a bundle can either be a stamp set with dies or it can be a stamp set with um, punches. This one actually has dies. And so when you see it's highlighted in white, you, that has a coordinating die. You can stamp, I don't know if you can see it very well, but you will actually stamp these images, then you have a die to punch them out. Plus there's usually extra dies in there too. So this is your stamp set, the lighting the way. And this here, um, Stampin' Up! is actually doing something different this time. So you can actually get this stamp set in photopolymer, which is the clear photopolymer plastic, or you could get it in the red clean rubber. So when you go to order this, um, just make sure there is a C for the clean and a P for the photopolymer. It really is just a preference and what stamp you like. And I think Stampin' Up! is just testing it out to, I guess, see which ones the customers prefer. So even when you order the bundle, you get 10% off by getting the stamp set and the dies together. But keep in mind, there is a C 
for the red rubber, the cling stamp bundle, or P for photopolymer. It'll be interesting to see what most people order. So I did want to show you a trick. Um, I was in the stamp room with my dear friend, Debbie Wilson, and you know, when I pull the dies out of here, I can never figure out how they go back. They're um, all over the place. So with the dies, she said what she does, and I thought it was genius. You know, it doesn't have to be a big, huge idea to be genius, but she actually, she said she just takes a pen. Let me put this down here, give you a visual. She takes a pen and before she takes all of her dies out, she'll just trace it with a pen. She goes all the way around and then you can see where your dies go. Now I know that is simple, but I'm sorry, I thought it was genius. And so with all my dies, what I have done is I've traced them so that when I go to put this back, I know exactly where they go. Plus the nice thing is if anything is missing, you'll be able to see it right away. So thank you, Debbie Wilson, for that awesome tip. And something else that um, I had thought of is to make a copy of your dies. Now this one especially, this is called the Dainty Delight dies, and they are great, but I could promise you with all these dies in here, I would have, after about the third or fourth one I've taken off, I'd probably just throw them in the envelope because I'm not gonna remember how all this goes together. But if I trace them like Debbie did, I'll know on the paper. Plus what I've started doing that I really like is I will make a photocopy. So here I just laid this piece down on my copy machine, made a photocopy, and then I'll slide it in the back here. So when I am actually looking at my dies, I can see what dies are in this package. And then I never have to try to thumb through the catalog or, or different things. So that's a good tip for your dies also. All righty. So first thing I'm gonna do, um, again, let me, well, let me give you all the measurements of the paper that you're gonna need today. So here you have a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of Poppy Parade, and you're just gonna score it in half. So that um, is five and a half. Four and a quarter by 11, scored in half at five and a half. This is for the inside of your card. It's a piece of basic white, and it's four by five and a quarter inches. You're gonna use a smaller piece for the front. Now this piece here, y'all know I was a drafter in my previous career. Um, so this piece technically is three and 13 sixteenths by five and one sixteenth. And the reason is it just gave me like a one sixteenth of a smaller of the starry sky border. But if you don't wanna go that, that small in your cutting, three and three quarters by five will work also. All you're doing is making it a sixteenth of an inch smaller, which would give you the standard quarter inch step down for each one. So three and three sixteenths by five and one sixteenth, or three and three quarters by five if you wanna keep it simple. And then this piece here is Starry Sky. And this is four inches by five and a quarter. And I have to say, there were times when I struggled with Starry Sky. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful blue, but I just really couldn't figure out what I liked the color with it. But I have to tell you, Poppy Parade was made for Starry Sky. I absolutely love it. So again, we have Steph and Judith and Gwen, uh, Kay McCoy, all of you, Sandy, Linda, I'm trying to check my comments here. Hello, everybody, Brenda. I'm so glad y'all could join me. This is, a, again, this is a fun card and I think you'll really like it. So here, this is what the standard die cuts. Cuts this little guy right here. Well, I needed to make it smaller because I felt like it was almost too big for here. I mean, it could work, but if you can uh, change so what I did is first thing is I cut off the side handles. Now, when you look at this, that's really already cut. It's all these little creases in here are cut through, just um, not on the side. So I just take my paper snips and I'm just gonna snip that and snip that so that I really didn't have to change or take a chance on cutting up any of that edge. And I tried cutting this way and it was awkward for me. So I just flipped it over because I can still see the cut. So I'm just gonna cut that and cut that. 
So there's the beginning, and then I'll just cut it off at the top. Let me give a little snip here. And we do have the best paper cutting scissors in the world. So sharp, okay. So I'm just gonna snip that and then snip that. So that brought my lantern down to this, but I still kind of felt like it was too tall. And you know, going on the top was just as tall as a big one. So then what I did is, again, that's you know already cut. I just snip here, came across, snip there. And this now it's starting to look at a more, well, like a smaller Coleman lantern that we used to use when we were camping. But to shorten this, um, I felt it was best to cut out this middle part because that's where the bulk of the um, distance is. So again, just a snip and a snip. So it looks like that. And then here, snip, snip. So I got rid of this piece and kept the top. And that is going to create a smaller lantern. So what I did, hey, Sarah, glad you're here. So now what I did to hold these together, I took a piece of my tear and tape because you know it's sticky on one side and as long as you don't pull off the other side, you don't have to worry about that side. So I turned it over, so that was on the back. Just take me a piece of my tear and tape, small piece. And I will hold this together. Actually, I think, yeah, let me put this here. It's just on the back. And then I can flip it over because that front part's sticky. And then I can just put this together, push down. And so it holds the two together, but yet, since I don't peel it off, it's not gonna stick to anything. And that is how you make the little lantern go smaller. So um, I'm gonna set this aside and then we're gonna continue with our card. But that was a lot of fun. The other thing I wanna show you is using the Stamparatus, which I always feel like is Stampin' Up's most favorite, it's, it's my favorite tool. Um, I don't think there's anything out there that even compares to it. <clears throat> and so I need to stamp some of these leaves. And actually I'm gonna be doing some card swaps. So I don't wanna have to stamp this every single time, run to the a die cutting machine and cut it out. Um, I wanna find a way that would be a lot quicker to mass produce them. So this is our Stamparatus, comes like this. And you have two trays. So one on the left, one on the top, and I've done different videos. They would be under videos and not lives on my Creating with Colleen Magnus YouTube channel. So please check out the videos because there's lots of techniques you can do with these. And what's nice is that the plates pull off. So I'm gonna get rid of this top plate, but when you do get it, you get the two acrylic plates, you get the foam mat, um, and then two extremely strong um, magnets. And I mean, they are strong. So what I'm gonna do is I just cut me a piece of scrap paper and I put it up here in the top corner. Then I am going to take some pure pizzazz. I already have my leaf on here, no special place. And then I'm going to close it and stamp my paper. Now the nice thing is every time I do this, it's gonna be in the exact same spot because this is a great positioning tool. So what I will do now is I am going to um, take this to the die cutting machine. Let me set this aside. I'm gonna take my leaf die and look, I'll know exactly where it goes because I've marked my paper. And I'm gonna take this, I'll put it on here and then I'll bring my machine over. And I'm gonna line it up with the die. And I always like to use a post-it note to hold it in place. Um, you know, Stampin' Up, we have tried to come out with some ma magnetic plates, and unfortunately they had some issues with them. And the beauty about Stampin' Up is they're not gonna sell a product that isn't top notch. So sadly we had to, to scrap that, but we all have post-it notes and if not, you should. 
So I'm just gonna put a post-it note on here to hold this in place. Then I will bring in my die cutting machine. Now with this one, you're going to use the basic base plate number one. You're going to use um, the number two plate because after all, this is a die so it's thin and you have to have that extra thickness in there. Then I'm gonna take my paper. Oops, it moved a little bit. Let me see, there we go. Put this on top and then just roll it through. Okay. So then when I take my die out, I have got my um, template here. So I've actually cut this leaf from um, that mask that I had. So let me bring back in my Stamparatus. Let me, I should put my die up before I lose it. Let me do that. And also, I don't know if y'all have this or not. Let me grab mine. It is, you know, if you go to, um, uh, look at that. That's how strong that magnet is. It's trying to get to my dies inside there. Um, but if you go to O'Reilly's or I think Walmart, they actually sell in the auto section little trays, and it's made to hold screws, like in a garage. Let me show you mine. So I have a large one and a small one, but the guys get this, they put it in their garage, and it keeps everything to it. Well, of course, the magnet's gonna stick to everything, but the nice part is, is your dies that you have, it sticks in there too and it's not coming out. So when I'm actually doing a lot of die cutting, I always use my tray, and I use these little magnetic um, trays to hold my dies because I don't wanna lose them. They're probably the easiest things you can lose. But it's just a magnetic tray or, yeah, different sizes. So it's a, it's a good little thing to have in the stamp room. Okay, so getting back to this. So I knew exactly where this was. It was in the top corner. So then I just put my magnet on there. And previously, I went ahead and cut um, just out of cardstock. In fact, I actually cut two at a time because it was a bold image. And this is where you save your time. It's almost like, I call it like puzzle stamping. I'm gonna take this piece. I'm gonna put it right in here. I'm gonna take my pure pizzazz. Okay, Gwen got hers from Harbor Freight. Yep, they have the trays there too, Gwen, but aren't they the best? You're not looking for all the little things. It just keeps it in one place. So what I've done is I've inked that up. I'm going to close it here. And sometimes it's tricky to get it out, so I've just got my pick -a tool and I'll pop it out. And just see how perfect that is? So now I can get my pieces stamped ahead of time. And the reason it's lined up perfect is because I stamped this piece of paper first, and then that's where I cut it out. So this is how I do a lot of my die cut stamping. So let me get a couple of these done because I'll need them for my card. You can put in different colored cardstock, just like a puzzle. So put this down here. That one's a little darker, but I'll put it in anyways. But the trick is just always make sure that this paper is um, where you originally had it, and that's why I line it up in the corner. And the other thing is, I don't always put what I'm stamping in the corner because you do have the tray here, and it can only go down so far. It's, it's, you can go down further here. You don't wanna put anything right up in the corner for, for stamping purposes. So let me do one more. Let's do one more pear pizzazz. So I'm doing pear pizzazz cardstock and mossy meadow cardstock, and I'm just using pear pizzazz ink on it all. But that's the quickest, easiest way because you get it cut and lined up one time, and then you can just mass produce all your stamping pieces after that. Okay. So incidentally, the Stamparatus is sold in our annual catalog and it is on page 147. 
So the Stamparatus sells for $49, and y'all know it is celebration. So from now through February 28th, when you purchase 50, a minimum $50 in Stampin' Up! product, you will actually uh, get to choose a level one product out of here. So for instance, I have done videos on the, um, the Dainty Flowers designer paper. Last week I did it on the Adorable Owls. Showed a really cool background technique with that. This paper is priceless. I have a couple videos on my channel with that. But if you purchase the Stamparatus for $49, you only need $1 more. So pick up a pack of the small grid paper that fits on your Stamparatus for $6.50. And then you can choose a level one celebration set for free. And if you see anything you want to order, of course, you can go to my creatingwithcolleen.com blog and just select um, shop now and get what you want. Okay, so moving on. Moving on. I am going to take the 3 and 13 16th, 5 and 16th piece right here. And I'm going to, let me just grab a piece of scrap paper um, so I don't stamp on my grid paper. This will do. And I'm going to take, let me see where my block is. I'm going to take that stamp off of my Stamparatus and you put it on a block to stamp. Now you do have to know once I do that, this template isn't any good because it was lined up exactly where it was supposed to be. Um, now you probably could, if you're lucky, you probably could lay it in here and then line it up. That's how I did it originally. But I found if I cut from the template where it's stamped, I got um, a much better image. So here I'm just going to take my stamp, put it on my clear block, and I'm going to just stamp some leaves um, at the top. So I will take this, and some I'm going to make full strength. Some, if you, as you'll see, if you uh, stamp again, it's lighter. It's like a two-step stamping, a two-tone stamping. But you have to be careful because, say if I came down here and I stamped that, wait, let me get a better, better one. If I stamped here, I'm gonna do it on my scrap paper. And then I stamped again here. Do you see how that's two-tone? What happened was this part stamped on the cardstock and this part did not. So then you're gonna get this line in your ink when you're stamping. So if you don't want that and you still want a lighter one in there, you'd be careful, just stamp off once. So stamp off, and then that'll put um, some lighter pieces in there. Well, good, Gwen, I'm glad you learned something today. She has a Stamparatus and loves it, um, but she had never done that with it before. So yes, always try to make stamping as easy as we can get it. So here I have um, this piece. I'm going to take, let me take one of these dark ones, and I think I'll put it over here. Let me see. Just put a little bit of, it's gonna hang off, so I don't wanna use a liquid glue. Um, but I did kinda want it to hang off some. I like the, the cut off, so it, it, like, it all goes together. Let me tilt that a little bit. Uh, let me see. Okay, remember how I always tell you don't push down till it's where you want it? Okay. So once I did this, um, I really wanted to put, I got ahead of myself. Let me put my lantern on. So I have my smaller version lantern. And what I'll do is I'll kind of put it where I want it. I'm just trying to eye the center. So I'll take the Daffodil Delight ink it up, and I'm just gonna say, yeah, that's close enough. Kind of show you where it is. To give it that little bit of a glow, Stampin' Up! in the new mini catalog came out with these uh, blending brushes, and thankfully they're smaller than the larger ones. Larger ones are great for doing backgrounds, but the smaller ones, you can just kind of get a little more uh, control over where you want it. So I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a glow. 
And then I can go ahead and tape this down on here. Um, I think I will use a little bit of liquid on this. Tombow liquid is awesome. Boop. Okay. And actually, don't put it on that um, round piece because we're going to put some twine through there. So here I have my lantern. And next I am going to take, oh my goodness, if y'all could see the mess here. <clears throat> I always say uh, when I go to stamp, I do the stamp and shuffle. I've got everything around me. I sit down and I push it to one side, I push it to the other side, and then I create. It's just how I roll. So here I'm just gonna take a piece of the twine that comes four to a color. It's a Baker's Twine Essentials Pack. I've used all the black, but it has like a crumb cake, a white, a vanilla, and a gray. So you get lots of good colors from there. And I'm gonna cut this piece about yay big. But the reason I, I wanted to have this one down first, cause I wanted my, see how my rope, I couldn't really tie it onto one of these, but I wanted it look like it was part of it. So I put this one down and I'll put that one over it. So I will just, loop it through here, and I will actually cut this off. That's that tip. And then with both of these up like this, I'm gonna put my tape on there, the stamp and seal, but then I think it's gonna stick to everything until I get it down on the card. So let me do this. Let me put this down. I think I will put just a little on there. I think it'll hold okay. It'll be all right. So there I have my, kind of hooked around that piece of the leaf. I've got my twine. And then I can take another one of these and put it on here. Uh, Marlene, you haven't used this set yet. Um, I have to tell you, I just, let me put it here. I actually just um, started using it this week. I have a couple events that I'm doing. I don't want to cover that up. And, I, you know, I have to say it is a lot of fun. So you will thoroughly enjoy using it. Again, I tried to talk myself out of it. I don't know why. Um, and I'm glad I talked myself back into it. I love it. Just stinking cute right from the start. Okay. So I have these kind of in here any way I want. And I think it's easier to turn it over when you're trimming this and cut it from the back side. So I have that trimmed there. And those trimmed there. I could also do that on a cutter. And that gives me this part of my card. So I wanna put my words on here first because that is bigger and I can work my fireflies around them. So I'm gonna put on here, you are all kinds of wonderful. Photopolymer, you can see exactly where it goes. And I put that in the starry sky. And then for the fireflies, I find that basic gray works really good for them. So, and you can just put them wherever you want. Again, they're just so stinking cute. You know, and it's it was funny, I grew up in, well, I grew up till I was six in Chicago, but even in Texas, um, or maybe it's just when we were kids, we saw fireflies everywhere. We used to get our jars out at night and we would catch them, you know, go all through the yard. And then, of course, at the end of the night, you let them go. It's like a catch and release. Um, but I just don't see them anymore. I don't know if they're just not here in Chesapeake or maybe I'm just not in the right area. Needed to be a little more, like, more trees around. I have pine trees, but I don't think they like the pine trees. But I would love for my grandchildren to experience catching um, the fireflies. Too much fun. So they have different size circles to put on their bottoms for the lights. But what I like to do is when I stamp it, I just lightly stamp off 
and then it makes it a little bit lighter. It's not as dark. So I'm using uh, Daffodil Delight. Gives them just a really cute little glow. So I have them. And then I can take this and I can mount it on my four, and a, four by five and a quarter piece of the Starry Sky. So do y'all have lots, lots of fireflies out near your house? I just want to make sure it's not a great bridge thing. So I have this here. And then for my Poppy Parade, four and a quarter by 11. Scored at five and a half. And I always, whenever I cut a card long ways like this, I always score it. Because you're folding against the grain. And if you don't score that, you're going to have a chunky fold here. And you don't want that. So always score that ahead of time. And then here is our front. Now I was playing with this and I did uh, a couple things. I thought, wow, wouldn't that look really cool if, um, if we had like the uh, clear acetate sheets? We have clear sheets. Wouldn't that be really cool if... I had the pieces in here, so I tried it. And I don't know if you can tell, I just actually put a tiny drop of liquid glue in the middle and stuck it down. But I don't know if you can see the glare or not. But it almost made it look like there was glass in here. Now I also tried it with cardstock vellum, but with the cardstock vellum, I thought it hid the glow too much. Um, but to be honest with you, what I really do like the best was the Wink Estella. So if you just came in here and did the inside um, with your Wink Estella, it just gives it that glittery, glittery, I don't know if I can say that, glow. And I really just liked it best of all. Just, again, all these little things that are supposed to glow and shimmer. Just put a little bit on. And then um, I went ahead and tied, which I like how I did that off camera. Tied a little bow. And I'm just gonna put that on with the glue dot. So I actually just put the bow on the glue dot and pinch it off. And then once it's on there, I can pull the little tails down. So that's the front of the card. We're gonna do something on the inside. What do y'all think of the front? <clears throat> this was, just so you could see it again, this was another card that I made. So this is the full size lantern and it's also great in our foil paper. So this is the copper foil that we have, and it looks awesome. A um, lot of fun. I also did this card uh, with a black lantern, and I love the way it turned out. But this is how you take the large lantern and make it into a smaller one. So let me check my comments real quick, because I've been doing a lot of talking. Um, yeah, okay, so she's had a lot of, she has fireflies, but not like when we were kids. I know, it's, well, good memories. Um, let me see. So, uh, somebody I haven't met before. I've been watching you now since I found you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. In fact, I appreciate all of you watching. Um, I really, really do. I'm trying to do more online, more with YouTube, and I appreciate you being here with me. So here I have, let's do the inside for this card. Again, I think I'm going to just put a little bit of brush up at the top. So as I look around, if I haven't gotten out of my seat, I know it's here somewhere. Uh, thank you, Sandy. Sandy, do you have this bundle yet? Because I, I could see you using this bundle. I really could. Sandy's granddaughter was... Um, Born around the same time mine was, and they stamp all the time. Okay, I'm messing that up. Let me try it again. So what I love about stamping, there's two sides to every piece of paper. So let me just put a couple in here. And I don't have to go all the way across the top. Uh, one more little one that's stamped off. Okay, so there I have the top. And... The other fun thing that they have is they have this like little, 
the little dots, like your fireflies just flittering across. So I'm gonna use the larger firefly. And keep in mind, they do, um, they have dyes. So I'm just gonna put that little guy right there with the basic gray. And then I'm just gonna take some balmy blue and just do a little trail up to, up to him or her, like so. And then once again, I'll get my Daffodil Delight and I'll even do this one full strength so you can see that it's brighter. So Sandy said, um, yes, it was one of the first bundles she bought. And um, oh man, they have lots of fireflies and they call lightning bugs in Missouri. So that must be where they're all at. But I am bound and determined to find them. Yeah, I love this bundle. So here, I'll just take this. And y'all remember when you're using this tape, roll your wrist. It's great tape, it's very strong, but you can't just pull it. You have to roll your wrist and it'll work great for you every time. Okay, and there's your card. So that wraps up another lunch break um, here on Creating with Colleen Magnus. And again, don't forget that Celebration is running now through the end of February. So with every minimum $50 orders that you spend, you can get yourself um, a free level one item. And also don't forget, we have the mini catalog that has just started. You're gonna see a lot of good things from here. But if you don't currently receive my newsletter, please go to creatingwithcolleen.com and you can request it there. You can order there. I would love to hear from you all. And if your order is under $150, please use the January host code that I have there. So let me check my comments. Let me see. Um, yep, lightning bugs is what everybody calls them. Okay, Beth, because you said I saw a Husky, and I'm like, I don't know who Husky is. <laughs> Hello, Beth. Thanks for joining me. And Marlene, I do appreciate it. So you all have to go out and do something creative now. You should do something creative every single day, whether it's in the kitchen or, you know, in the stamp room, preferably in the stamp room. But, um, yes, Lake Gaston, I'll find them. And so, you know, Steph, we go to Lake Gaston every year, so we are going to be out at dusk looking for lightning bugs. But I hope you all join me again. Um, again, I'm creating with Colleen Magnus, and I come to you live every Wednesday, Eastern time. So I hope to see you again next week. And again, I appreciate all y'all's support. God bless you all and have a wonderful day.